Hello, my name is Jennifer Lewis, CEOE, and today I'm presenting Empowering Your PowerPoint. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the basic idea of how to create a PowerPoint. So we're going to go in here to File, and we're going to go to New. This gives you an array of templates, so you could pick any of these templates here, and these are all great. Or you could actually search for templates. So if you wanted a Valentine's Day one, you could see if they have a Valentine's Day one. And they have printables. It will give you all sorts of things that are online, not just the templates to create a PowerPoint. So these are also broken down into presentation templates, themes, education, charts, diagrams. Click on diagrams. They'll give you some different diagrams you might want to use. Business and infographics. These infographics are especially useful to convey a large amount of information succinctly in a very interesting manner. So I'd recommend looking at those. But today we're just going to go and create a PowerPoint. So I'm going to go back to presentations. I'm going to pick a PowerPoint that I think would be interesting to me. So I'm going to put dogs. And this is the PowerPoint I like. So it downloads it to your computer and automatically has placeholders in it. You'll see here that's some infographics. Now what I want to mention first is the first thing you'll probably want to do is figure out, you know, maybe I don't like this particular font. So this is Franklin Gothic Demi. And you can see that right here in the font tab. So what I would recommend doing so you don't have to change it on every single slide because it should be somewhat uniform. Um, as I recommend going to View and then going to Slide Master. Slide Master is where you want to make everything uniform. So if you decide that you're going to be making this Times New Roman, that is where you would like to do it. This also tells you what size of font you're going to use. If you're going to make it bold, um, you can also go in here and click on the entire slide and format the background. It's a solid fill, so it's going to fill the whole thing with whatever color you pick. So if our theme was, you know, USM and we have a gold color as our theme, we could do that. You could go in here and also change the background styles in this way. You could also change the colors by going through this array of colors. You see that band in the middle starts changing. You see it just turns to grayish, bluish, light brighter blue. You can go up this way. It turns to green. So just pick what you want. You can also change the theme here. So if you want to change the theme entirely for the entire presentation, you could definitely do that here. And it will change it across the board. Now again, you want to make sure that you're going to have to change the font again. So here, right here, you're going to go with your Times New Roman and do it like that. Now, I'm going to tell you the first thing I tried to do was do this and change the font, and that didn't seem to work. See, it won't let you pick every single thing up. So that is not a way to change the fonts. So I've just been going in here and making the font changes one by one. Again, you want to make them everywhere that you want some uniformity. I double click to highlight everything. Again, they're all times, canons, it's like what the font is for this. Okay. Now the other thing that you can do here, in addition to change the font, is you can right click, you can insert layouts, you can duplicate a layout, you can rename a layout. They have some kind of description on that title slide. So if you want to call it something else, I've never really used that, but it's definitely something that you can think about. Um, the other thing you can do on some of these, and it's just some of them, it will actually light up to allow you to le delete the layout. Right there, you can delete that one. But more like this because there's another one that's similar to that somewhere in around here, so that's important. The other thing that you can do here is you can insert placeholders. So placeholders are different items that go into the, your PowerPoint and their goal is to provide content in a structured way. So these are the different placeholder types. Content, text, picture, chart, table, smart art, media, and online image. 
So if you do that, you select what you want, and then you drag it onto your slide, and it makes it. So there, now you have that content. So if you had a blank slide, for instance, this is a great example, if you want to insert a layout, it's a blank slide, you would go into placeholder, content, drag it out here, and there you go. And here's the way that you would use this most effectively. A lot of times you'll want to add something to another slide, and it's a plain slide, let's say, but you're automatically thinking maybe you're going to add text. Well, you don't want to add text because text is not accessible um, in terms of having a screen reader go through and read it. So you always want to use one of these placeholders because they are accessible. So that is important. So the other thing that you can do, again, you can delete it, rename it, insert layouts. You can change the slide size from standard to wide, and you can also hide background graphics. You see all those graphics? So if you like that color but you didn't like any of those graphics, you could just get rid of them. Again, there's effects here, transition pieces, and you can change the font across the board here. Um, let's see, let's try this and see if we change the font. Here we go. Okay, so the way to change the font easily here is to highlight everything, go in here, and find the font that you'd like. And it changes it all the way across the board. If for some reason you want to change one particular font differently than the other ones, you can definitely do it here. And of course, there's some standard sizing there, so if you don't like the sizing, you will have to go in on each of these and change the size one way or the other. And then there's the themes, and you see it's just changing the colors. So there's a lot of things you can do to make things look very nice. But again, make sure you do it uniformly using the Slide Master. So now we're going to get out of the Slide Master. You see we have a beautiful little slide right there. Looks pretty good. But what if we need these? Well, we can right-click it and just say duplicate slide and it makes an exact duplicate and then we can change what we want on this slide. In this context menu here you also have delete slide so we decide we didn't want to. Uh, you could also have a hide slide. Um, sometimes I'll do that if I'm doing research and I decide not to include something but I still want to keep it there in case I want to look at it myself. Uh, you can actually add new slides here. Now, if you add a new slide here, you may not want it to be this type of slide. So remember, you can right-click, go to Layout, and then you're going to pick what layout you want. So you might want this comparison slide, for instance. So those are some examples of things you can do. Now, the other thing you might want to do is we have this little diagram here and I'm going to click on design. There's a design ideas option and it'll give you another way to display this information. So here it's made it into an infographic. It's not that effective. It's made it into two things. It's also made it with the little icons. Mm. Honestly I like it best the way it was. So I'm going to put it back the way it was. But always remember you can use your back arrow to undo, or you can use control Z, so that was referenced up there, and control Z. Now I'm not really liking these little designs here, so I'm going to go back to view, back to the slide master, and I'm going to hide background graphics and hit there. And so as you see, now it looks a little bit better without those distracting background graphics. Now. One thing I wanted to point out about the design is that you can see the design without before you select it by simply going in and going down the row. You can also get additional designs by clicking the orange button at the very bottom. 
and it'll give you as many as it has. There's not really much in this one. There's going to be more in this one. The more complicated your slide, the more options you're going to have. So you might have that one right there. And you might have this one right here. It's just different ways of the same information being laid out. So that's definitely some options for you. So if you're not artistic, it can kind of give you a little bit of a advantage by being a little bit artistic for you. Now the next thing that I want to talk to you about is in terms of the handouts. So now we've already gone in here, we've made a slide, um, we're going to make a new slide right here. And we're going to talk about the different things that we can do here. Just like we had those content placeholders when we went into view and we went into slide master. We went into view and we went into slide master and we were able to go in and insert placeholders. You can do that a different way on the front end. When you're here, you have the option of creating a table. And you can go ahead and configure this table. And then of course, once you configure the table, you'll see that there's a variety of slide options for the table design. It can change how the columns look. You can erase things if you had something in there. Uh, you can change the shading so it's shaded differently. You can change your pen color. So you can do a lot of different things. Quick styles also come up. get out of the test here and get out of the table. Okay. The next thing you can do is make a chart. I like the dark charts. You just click on it. It gives you an Excel spreadsheet underneath it and you can make the changes to the Excel spreadsheet. Then you can also delete categories yourself. Just highlight it, delete it, and it actively makes the change. So that's definitely something you can do. Smart art. I like the processes. So if I was doing a process, it would be something like uh, catch dog, spay or neuter, and adopt out. That kind of goes with our theme. It could be like the animal shelter process. Okay. Um, again, you can always go in here and change how these things look. So just by going fill, it changes the fill to something else. So you thought something was more important. You can also change the style of the boxes, which also changes their color and text. You can change the color of the outlines. So right here you see I've turned it blue. I can turn it to a lighter color. I can turn it to a darker color. Those are going to be hard to see. I can turn it red. I can add comments that really be that useful. You can also go in here and click on the box itself and change the smart art to a different smart art. So right here, that might be the way I want to emphasize it or I might want to put pictures. So you see those little icons above those? Those are pictures. You can go to the internet and upload pictures. So if I wanted to go here I could go online and find a picture of a dog. Catch a dog. There's some dogs look like they're running away. And I could go online and find a picture of neuter. And there's their an adoption. So you see how quickly you can get this done? And 
you can double click it or you can click it and insert. So you see you can just kind of change it around. So I'm trying to make it a little bit smaller. So you have to play with this. And it kind of has a mind of its own. So a lot of times it's going to take a little bit of work. So right here it's the problem is the font is too big. But see the picture up there. I'm not really able to see enough of the picture of the doctors. I don't like that. Take a move it this way. But you kind of have to play with it in terms of what it's going to do. And it is relational. You saw that when I changed one, it was kind of trying to change the other. It's only so much you can do because it has an idea of where it wants it. But little by little you can kind of get it where you'd like it. But there are some limitations. <laughs> in terms of what you can get it to do because it gets see it's only so small it will let you get it so that's important to think about as you're trying to set things up that you can see enough of it it might mean making it bigger this is the best way to do this is make it bigger so you just happen to see more of the picture so again this is just one of the smart art options and you can go back and change the colors. You can change the styles again. So there's a lot of options in here in terms of what you can do to make it look a little bit more engaging than it would otherwise. A little bit less flat and one dimensional. So I do encourage that you do that. So let's get back out of here. And let's go back into, we're just using our control Z to go all the way back out. And we might just reset this thing. Try to do it in the easiest way possible. So I'm just going to go back to our original layout. Let's see if we can just delete those. There we go. See now, since we did that though, it's a smart art, so it's not wanting to do that. So what we're actually going to do is just reset and that's a different one that we could use. Let's say we didn't want to use any of these. I'm just using my control Z to get out of here. We went so many steps that we no longer are able to use our control Z is what it is. So after we do our smart art, we can go back in here and this is our 3D images. My favorite 3D image is the heart. If you hit heart you'll see the 3D heart. This would be great for a presentation on heart disease or heartworms, I guess, but there's just no worms in the picture. Uh, but it would be definitely something that you can manipulate the image a lot. So you see there's one view. You can change the views. There's a variety of views. You can increase the size. Just let you increase the pan and zoom the size. You can also go in here and pause it so that you no longer have to see that. And you can actually pull it around and get different views. That's part of the pan zoom piece. You see, all I did was just get in there, touch that little circle there, that white circle, and then you have the ability to manipulate the heart around however you want it to be.
Again, it's this little white circle here. Okay. The heart is just one of the images, though. I do urge you to look a little bit further into this and try to find whoops, an image that might be best suited for you. There is a variety of things, including computers, animated dinosaurs, 3D shapes, sculptures, furniture, etc. The next thing you can do is you can find a picture. So if you click on there, it takes you to your pictures. You can click there and insert a picture of a dog. When you insert the picture of the dog, you'll see that your design ideas was left open. The one you got to by going to design. And so design ideas will give you bigger, better options that it thinks would be great. Um, you can right click here and change the background since the background doesn't fit. You right click, get on the eyedropper, and maybe change it to the color of the dog. And that's the piece that it changed right there. But you could also click on this part and change this to a different color that you thought was better. So we get the eyedropper again. It's just changing different sections of it. And you can go in here and try to get it the best way that you would like to make it look nicer. And you could change this piece here to be a different color. And this could be information about the particular dog. And remember, you can always go back in here to design and pick a different layout. And so that one has a lot of reds in here, so that's probably not that great. So just kind of Feel comfortable going around and trying to find the one that's best suited for you. Like that one turned out really great for that slide. Those colors kind of pop. This one I'm not so happy about. Probably to change the slide to something else there so we can see him better. So again, there's a lot of things you can do from an art standpoint with the color and contrast pieces. Now that we've gone in, we've done all that, um, there's actually some more things we can add. This is some online images. So if we wanted to add a specific dog type, so we want to add a pit bull. Doesn't seem to have it. We want to add a cat. So here's a cat. We can add this cat. You just need a little cat. And that could be our shelter pets. We can also go in here and add a video. So you click on insert video, you could find a video. You could also click on insert videos and go to online videos. Oh, it's wanting to actually have the actual URL of the video. Try to find some stock videos. That animal adoption. These are just videos about animals. So it's going to add it with a video of an animal. It took the whole page. And it does play though. And the little dog looks at you. So it's very, very cute. But again, it's not really what we were looking for. So to do this piece, you either have to download the video. Oops. You have to link to a file. So if you went to video did online videos, you first have to search YouTube. 
So if we search YouTube, I'm just going to show you real quickly. And then you go in here and you search for animal adoption. And it, um, the Bing always brings you to other things, so click on YouTube. And you click on share and copy this code right here. Now, you can close this all out and you can put this code here and hit insert. And there's the video. And there you go. You can play that video. So that's definitely a way to um, incorporate a lot of more engaging factors into your videos, some dynamic pictures. Um, there's also this very cute one, that, so there's things like this. So if I go to insert, and then I go to video, and I go to stock videos, this video of a cat and it is an actual video that I can click on and you see him moving around. So there's some excellent things to make things really stand out in a presentation so please do take advantage of those. Okay so let's go and add another slide. And then we're going to go to the last things, which are the icons. So there is a wide variety of icons. They're all black and white, but they're very professional looking. So you might want to find a dog, let's say. And there's just little dogs and different things that you could add. And again, you can double click it or click it once and then insert it. And it might be just good for a little section there. Okay, so once you have your PowerPoint configured, the next thing you want to think about is actually adding some notes. So I'm going to move this around a little bit, and we're going to click right here for some notes. When you click there, you can add notes. I'm going to put test one, two, three. Um, these are good for adding things you're going to say. If you're going to do a presentation, this will be a good place to put some keywords that will allow you to build what you're going to say. Uh, without actually having an exact script. So the first thing you're going to do after you do that is you're going to need to be able to see that or, or maybe even hand that out to yourself as you prep for it. So when you go into view again, to the right of Slide Master are Handout and Notes Masters. So if you want to make handouts for people, and you want to hand this whole thing out, you could configure it here. You would set up whether or not you want the header, the footer, the date, the page number, the size of the, the orientation of the slide, the size of the slide, how many slides per page. You can also choose different background styles. Again, you'll do your colors here, your fonts here for all of them, and your effects. You want some transitions there. So when you finish on that, you can close that. And again, that's for just for your handouts. Okay. So let's go over here to File the print and right here underneath print all slides there's a handout section again you're going to have to choose your options here in terms of how many slides you want on here so say you want six it shows you six slides now what if you wanted to see your notes you saw that in those slides let's go back really quickly you don't see any of your notes where's your one two three okay so that did not work for that so we're going to go back to view we're going to go to Notes Master and make sure that we have the right colors and fonts. So we want Arial this time. Uh, we really don't need any effects here, but we do want to change the colors. So there we go. Uh, we don't need the date. We don't need a footer, but we'll leave the header. And we do want it portrait. Okay, so that's going to be our configuration. Uh, layout wise for our notes master. Then we're going to close our notes master. We're going to go back to file, go back to print, 
and then underneath here we're going to pick notes page. Now when we do that we can check and see if it's working by scrolling down and there we see our notes, test one, two, three. So this is correct. This is how you would see your notes. The other option I wanted to show you really quickly is the option to see the outline view. Instead of just a normal view, the outline view, it lets you actually see what you might have said, like some high level and some sub bullets. And then you could actually put it in here, go to file, print, and again, you could just choose outline view. Now back here on view, there was one other thing, which is the slide sorter. And this lets you move the slides around really easy. This is a good option if you're not really sure what order your presentation is going to be in. You just want to go ahead and do the research and put it out there. And then in the end, you'll just see all the slides, even if there's 50 of them, they'll all show up. And you can move them around in a way that's easiest for you. So I like to use this. It, it makes it easier to be a little bit more dynamic in how I create content. Okay, so we've gotten a pretty good feel for how to print everything out that we make and to configure things. So the next thing we want to talk about are text boxes. So text boxes are really not preferred. I'm going to go back to our home slide. Then I'm going to go back to view and go back to normal so we can see our normal. And we're here. What you don't want to do is just insert a random text box because you want to insert something. Again, if you want to make this accessible so the screen reader can see it, do not use the text box. Instead, go back to view, slide master, go back in here and insert some placeholders on that particular slide. So let's say if it was this slide here that has nothing, insert a content placeholder and then just pull it in and drag it. So there you go. And then you'll go back to your slide master and close out. Okay. So what kind of slide was this? So I guess that's the most important part to see. It was the second one. And so it already has its content in there. And it was the one that says title and content. So if you wanted to change that, you would go back to slideshow. Oops. You go back to view. Slide master. And this one, nope, that's double. This one is title and content, I believe. Rename, title and content, that's it. So right here you would go in and add text. And then you would move this over. So this is how you're supposed to build these out to make sure that they work. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to leave the slide master. And we're going to go to a new slide. And we're going to talk about if other ways that you can insert things. So right here, anytime you want to insert something, go to the Insert tab. You can insert tables. You'll see how quickly it does that. You can draw tables. You can insert Excel spreadsheets. Again, you can insert pictures from your device, from stock images, which it has an array of stock images, online pictures. You can take screenshots. It will allow you to actually do a screen clipping and then bring it in. It allow you to pick other images that you've already screen clipped and put them in. But for screen clipping, I do want to recommend something that I like personally. It's called GreenShot and it's free. It's at GreenShot.org. It's the easiest thing I've ever used. I just download it, and then after that, every time you want to take a screenshot, you hit the print, and then you just drag it, and it takes a screenshot, and it gives you a menu to save it or copy it. So I'm going to copy it, 
and then I could go to my PowerPoint and just push it in there or I could go to insert screenshot this is the other way to get a screen clipping and get a screen clipping and then it pushes it in there that way so that's another there's two screenshot ways within the program itself through insert screenshot or with green shot and that just uses your print key but if that was pretty easy with the insert screenshot so I would suggest doing that And you see while we were working on this, we also got a message that we should use subtitles. So we could turn this on. It's going to turn on subtitles for our PowerPoint. So if it's recording it, it's going to be able to see that if we're recording it in PowerPoint. But we're just trying to test it. So I wanted to show you that option is in there. Okay, let's go back to insert. Everything that we insert before, we can insert here. So again, this is one thing we really didn't talk about in the actual slide, but you can insert shapes, equations, flowcharts, stars, callouts, action buttons. You can also insert icons. We did talk about those a little bit. You can also insert the smart art we talked about before and the charts. Now let's talk about inserting something a little bit more interesting. So you see right there that after all those things we saw that we could insert objects. Let me find it. It's insert objects. And right here find the insert objects so you can create from a file and you can insert an actual PDF so if I had a PDF I could go find the PDF see if I have any PDFs I don't know what kind of documents I have this is a different computer so I'm trying to see there it is we have a dissertation so we're going to insert that and we can add a link to it. Okay, so it's having a technical difficulty. So we can insert an object. So what it does is it actually puts it in the frame. So there's two things we want to talk about here that we haven't talked about before, and that is insert form. So we're going to actually change this slide. We're going to right-click the slide and change the layout to blank or title only. There's no blank. Okay, and then we're going to go into forms. and it's slowly loading it. Let me get rid of this one. And you actually can use forms you've created before. You just put them in there. This inserts it. Or you create a new form or new quiz. So let's create a new form. Click on forms. You're going to see in a second it's going to show up and give us some options to set something up quickly. So right here I'm going to change this. Now what's going to be interesting is you're not going to be able to change it on the slide. I actually have another screen that's shown up over here and that is actually where you're going to make all your changes so right here I'm going to change it to um, animal shelter intake test and you can put name address and you see it's making those changes phone um, email they you first contact us okay. 
So if you've ever used Microsoft Forms, they're pretty much all the same. Instead of you sharing a link, you're just going to actively create this right here. And then when you're done, it's already in your PowerPoint. So it's updating as you do it. And so whoever gets the PowerPoint can actually click Submit and submit their data. You see it's doing it, it's sending it. It says your response was submitted. And it won't go back because it's already submitted your response. But it's a good way of getting a form to people if you're going to provide them with a PowerPoint. So I would definitely suggest you thinking about doing that. Now the other thing I want to talk about is find a sample or a document so that you can see just a sample document so if I'm going in here into this next slide and I'm going to insert object it gives me a variety of choices it gives me spreadsheets I can insert by creating a new one different things create new ones I can also insert from a file so I can just browse for files so that dog I inserted was there I'm trying to find something else that we could insert We can definitely insert that dog, and it inserts the actual file, it doesn't insert the picture, so that's important for you to know. Now if it were a document, though, it would look a little bit different. So let's open a Word document, and I'm just going to make it a blank, document test, 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 test. And we're going to save it on our desktop. We're going to go into insert object. We're going to create from file. We're going to find it. And it is actually in our OneDrive, I believe. Well, here's a bunch of things. It doesn't really matter. We'll just find something. Uh, let's see. Travel tips. Let's see if this PDF will work. And it does actually insert the actual document, not like an image of the document, but you can find a word when it does the word ones a little bit differently. So the word ones, it actually inserts what it sees. So I just want to draw your attention to that. So right here, it sees this information inside the document. So it actually gives me a look inside the document, where in the PDF it actually inserts a link to the PDF. So that's important to distinguish between those two things. So now we've talked about how to insert screenshots, PDFs, Word documents, talk about inserting, inserting videos, inserting charts, shapes, icons, forms, and the smart arts. Now we can also optimize animations. So let's say that we want to create a new slide, and we're going to get an image um, of a car. We just need one car. There we go. We have a taxi. You can make the taxi animated. Click on the object, and you see that it's already bringing things up, it thinks you can do with it. You can go to animation, and you can have it float in. 
You can have the car or taxi grow shrink. You can have it swivel. You can have it fly in. And you can change the speed, how it does those things. You can see the animation pane right there. You can change what the look and feel of that is. Oops, let me go back to animation. And right here on the left, there's a preview. So when you do something, you can go ahead and preview it if you'd like. And there's more if you scroll down here. It gives you all sorts of things, including this custom path where you draw where it goes. And then hit escape to finish, and then it goes and does that path. So if I click preview, it's going to actually go through that whole path. And how I stop the drawing line is hitting the escape key. And don't forget that you can use the animation painter just as you would the format brush. So you could use the same information to animate other things. And it gives you information about what it is. And you can change the duration of how long the animation lasts. And you can start it with click or with previous. And so you can just play with those settings. So that's definitely something that you could do to make something just a little bit more interesting. Now the next thing that we want to talk about are those triggers we just saw. Hold on a second. So a trigger can be something like clicking on a slide. So instead of doing it by timing, it will be that the person clicks on a slide and then this whole path starts. So that's important to recognize.
or with the previous or after the previous and set some times in there. So again, just kind of play with that to see how that looks. So if we did that, you'd see that it is a little bit delayed and everything else pops up. So that's another setting that you can do to kind of create some engagement. Now, transitions are also something that we want to talk about in terms of getting things to look nice. So if you go to transitions, you can insert a push, and so it pushes the next slide. You can do a wipe, wipes it away, and there's your next one. You can do a random bars, and it transitions between slides using whatever design you have. And again, that's just selecting a transition. So again, we did use the slide show, show view, and you can use it to preview from the beginning or from the current slide. So those are definitely things you can do um, in terms of making, these are definitely things you can do to make things easy to see where your errors are. So if you did it from current slide, it displays the current slide, and it shows that transition we had in it. Put something on it, and it's going to record a, a short video of the slide. And that shows what we were stop. working on earlier. So, now that we've completed that section of things, let's transition to how to present online. You actually have to be in the online version, but you can go in there, enable remote views to download the presentation and present online. It actually gives you a link. So there are some instructions in there. I think the thing I want to focus on last, though, is how to rehearse with Coach. So. When you go in there and get a slideshow, you can also rehearse with Coach, and you'll see really quickly that when you click on Coach, you see a box. You're probably not seeing it because of where it's situated on my screen right now, but there's a box on my right, and it shows on my right screen, start rehearsing. So as I'm speaking, it is going to calibrate the speed at which I'm speaking, how clear I'm speaking, if I'm making a significant number of errors like ums and up and if all those types of situations will show up as errors so right now you're seeing there's a little pop-up that says trying to use filler words it's trying to vary your pitch and adding emphasis to keywords so I'm supposed to highlight things so it's important that you use variation in tone so that people remain interested and you don't sound monotone so again this is a very good way. It says good pitch, keep it up, and you can just pause it or hit escape to finish it up. When you do, you get your rehearsal report, and you'll see right there. It gives you a summary of how much time was spent, which slides were read, the pace at which, the pitch at which. So you see right there when I began at one point, it was a little bit monotone and flat, so it's trying to help me and let me know that that is not the way to speak. And you'll see right there, everything else was pretty good, and you can rehearse it again. So that's definitely something I want you to keep in mind as you're working on your presentations. You can also rehearse timings, and that will allow you to record things so it automatically plays with the time. And when you click on that, it just lets you click through things as you need. There's a little arrow at the top, and it says recording, and you click on through. And as you go from slide to slide, it saves this, the settings so it knows how long to play each slide as you're actually going ahead and performing or presenting your templates. Um, you can, at the end, you can also decide not to use it or use it. And last but not least, you can record a slideshow. Go into the recording tab. Record slideshow, recording tab, record slideshow, and it does let you record the slideshow from the entire thing. You can speak through it, and it's got a video built in for watching too. So that's definitely something that you might want to use. You can also use screen recordings, and it records what's actually on your screen. So if you're trying to um, demonstrate, if you're trying to demonstrate how to use software, the screen recording would be very useful. You can also use the PowerPoint and print it. 
can also go to the recording tab and select export the video and export the entire PowerPoint to a video and that could be useful. Don't forget to use your dictate feature. So from your main home slide, you can click on dictate. And if you click on dictate, you'll very quickly realize how quickly it can dictate things. You do need to click on a slide for it to type. So maybe you put it in your notes and you say, this is the information that I would like you to type as quickly as possible because if you put that information in there, then I can quickly understand what I need to say and then I don't want to ever take a, a break. So the quicker you speak, the quicker it goes. Now you see there's no punctuation at all, it would be a complete run on sentence period. But you can add punctuation by simply saying what you want to say, exclamation point. So be very precise with what you're saying, because if you are not comma, then you will have errors, period. So you can see there, if you're very precise in your punctuation, you can learn how to use it, and it will save you a lot of time and a lot of effort. So last things I want to go over really quickly are accessibility tips for all Office products. Remember, all your images do have to have the alt tag text tag on it, so you want to right-click your image and click alt text and add something that describes it. It's not the same thing as the captions, which are the titles. An alt text describes your image, you also want to place the images in line with text. Again, a right click to set that up. Avoid watermarks, avoid headers, avoid footers. They cannot be read by screen readers. Use the built-in slide design, layouts, and templates. Make sure that you describe the hyperlink text. So instead of putting a link that just says university, it would be University of Southern Mississippi website. In terms of tables, you want simple tables, like the first table that's displayed in the screen, rather than a complex table, like the second table. You want to use the built-in colors, as contrast must be high enough, or it's not going to be viewable. Font size has to be 18 or larger, sans serif, which would be fonts like Arial and Calibri. Entitle each slide with a unique title, even if it's slightly different. So the last slide was accessibility tips for office products. This one is additional accessibility tips for office products. Use simple tables again, and then make sure there's enough white space between the text. The last thing that you want to remember is that it's going to read the PowerPoint in the order that it believes that it is placed. So as you see on the right hand side, the order of some of these things are wrong. To move things around, all you do is drag them up. So if you were to go in here, go to home, select selection pane. You see the order that things are placed. So image 8 is that one right there. So it probably needs to be last. So we're going to fix that. So now it's 1, 2. And when you click on it, you can see 3, 4. So it should be 5, 4. 6 is that table. And 8 is that table. And that puts them in order. So you have to make sure you do that for those. Otherwise, they'll be right out of order. The screen reader can only do so much. And finally, I want to make sure that you remember that you can check accessibility by going to your review tab and clicking check accessibility. It gives you a bar here that gives you information about what is wrong so that you can fix those things and make sure that your PowerPoints are accessible. So hopefully this information was helpful to get you started on how to empower your PowerPoints and get you ready to use this from presentations, to speeches, to simple research memos in a more engaging format, or the beginnings of an online course. PowerPoint can be used for many things, and I wish you the best of luck in empowering your PowerPoint next time that you use it.